Hey guys, it's going to be another video for uh, Chaos uh, Plant Fairies. So I'm I'll get up, I'm up against the Value Turbo deck uh, that does play Lila. So just uh, FYI, just to show you guys what it does. So I go first. I don't know what I'm playing against, so I set Dust Shoot, so I know what they're up. I set two because uh, Heavy Storm, uh, Heavy Storm and Dust Shoot's not good. So I Dust Shoot right away. So right away, I can tell that uh, when he drew the Sirocco that he's on uh, Value Turbo because no pure Black Wing deck plays uh, Lila and Reiko. So I take the Reaper here because it's the most problematic card in here. So he summons a Lila, I think, and then forces my bottomless. Uh, this is good because for him, if he can uh, bring out an arm wing, uh, the bottomless is one bottomless is gone, so he only has to deal with one more. Uh, I draw into a plague spitter zombie and I set plague and I don't send any back row, which is weird. Maybe I set oh yeah, I set uh, only plague spitter zombie because I was afraid that he just might set the Raiko, and then uh, this way I can uh, I can just attack the Raiko and then trade the Raiko for the plague. Um, so that's what happens here. That's why I don't send any back row. Uh, he summons the Sirocco here, he attacks over, so I'm, I, I make him do this play so that he could uh, pretty much end his turn. He has no back row still, uh, I know he still has brain control. So I draw into a Nova Summoner here, I have the option of summoning the, no the Nova Summoner, crashing into him and then making sure that his Sirocco gets banished with DD Warrior Lady, uh, this way that he can't float into another one. But I make the mistake to set the, the Nova Summoner, uh, because... Um, yeah, those, this is actually a misplay. Setting the Nova Summon here is really bad because he could attack, he could just tribute the Sirocco for Caius. Even though I didn't see this Caius in his hand, it's likely he can open it and then sacrifice for it. And plus, there's another reason why you shouldn't leave Sirocco out there is because he can just, um, he can use the, he could tribute it off this for another Sirocco. And then he has a Sirocco in Graveyard, and then whenever he has a value the next turn, uh, he'll be able to make an Arm Wing. So I should have crashed the Nova Summoner make the uh, Shiny Angel attack again, and then uh, get a uh, DD Warrior Lady and banish it. Okay, so he draws into Compulsory here. Uh, he sacrificed for Caius, uh, which is a more simple play, and he attacks over, and then I take 2,400 points. Um, looking at his hand here, he doesn't he didn't have a way to deal with Gores, uh, except for Compulsory, but that's not a good out to Gores. So, uh, yeah, I think he misplayed a little bit too, but he's probably banking on me not having it. Uh, I draw into Brain Control here. I have the option of Synchro Summoning. So what I can do is Brain Control uh, the Caius here, but I don't. What I do instead is I set the Mirror Force because I still want to draw into my engine piece. Uh, I can't rely on having a level 8 Synchro to carry me. So what I do is I just set the Mirror Force here. I had the option here of uh, Mirror Forcing right away, but that didn't feel great to me. So I, I instead I let him give the impression that it wasn't a Mirror Force, so I just take all the damage here. And then I just uh, pretend he doesn't have anything. He goes into the Vayu Armwing play, and then this way he can just uh, press the next turn. I draw into a DD Warrior Lady here, and I summon an attack position. Uh, the reason why I summon an attack position is because I want him to break control it uh, instead of uh, setting it. Okay, because this way, this telegraphs that I have Honest, and I want him to think it's Honest anyways, even though I really do have it. And then he break controls here, takes the DD Warrior Lady, and then uh, since he kind of logic out that I might not have Mirror Force, uh, he could just attack with everybody safely and not have to worry about Mirror Force, but it is a Mirror Force here. Uh, I Mirror Force here because uh, I waste his Brain Control, I waste his value, and I waste his Caius and his uh, Armageddon Knight to uh, pretty much come back in the game. Because now he's at three cards to my four, because I'm going to draw draw for turn here. Uh, he should have probably summoned the Plague Spreader Zombie here to make a, um, to make a Stardust here. Uh, I don't know why he didn't, because uh, maybe he was afraid that I might have a back row, but there's no back row that stops the... Uh... Yeah, there's no back, there's no good back row, because uh, he already had brain control, so he should have made Stardust there. Uh, he's, he does a T-set here. I, I have the Angel here. I summon the Honest, because I still don't want to walk into a, a Raikou. I know he has a, a Raikou. So I know he has a Raikou here, so I summon the Honest here so I can attack. Uh, I want to keep my... Um, I want to keep my Shiny Angel so that I can Ultimate Offering... Uh, the angel here. Okay, uh, here I do make a nunsman misplay. I should have set the brain control as well. Uh, in case this is an MST, he can just MST it. Uh, but whatever. He sets the oppression here, and then uh, he passes here. And then I don't activate ultimate offering because I don't need to do that. Um, I had I drew into a lone fire, which is really good. So I most likely no normal summon it afterwards. No, that's incorrect. I should have summoned the lone fire first, uh, just because, uh, so I can bait out his back row. Uh, but yeah, I attack him for 1400. I uh, main phase two, I think I flip the ultimate offering here to summon the lone fire, and then I um, go into titanial. <clears throat> then he oppressions here, so the oppression here pretty much wins him the game. Uh, he sets plague and he sets another monster. 
I go straight into battle phase. Oh, I don't. Never mind. I just set set. Okay. So I think why did I not attack here? I think I not I didn't attack here because I didn't have any monsters to defend against the plague spitter, and I was afraid of D prison. So that made more sense. So yeah, he sets bottomless here. I draw a Caius here, which is really good. However, he drew he drew the uh, bottomless, and I think what I should have done was uh, tribute summon for Caius here to banish the uh, royal oppression. Uh, yeah, that's my misplay because I do have the call of the haunted set, so I can just bring back Titanial. Uh, yeah, I can bring back Titanial here to attack over the set, and so since he wastes the bottomless here on the Caius, then he has to waste his. I guess Mirror Force could have dealt with Titanial, but I don't know. Uh, anyways, so he takes a thousand here. Uh, sets the he activates MST right away, which is really good for him because um, I can't chain it to anything now. I don't have anything I can chain it to, so I just let it resolve. Okay, I draw for turn here and I draw into Sangan, so hopefully I can just beat him down with Sangan, and hopefully I can get him down to below 800 with just Sangan. Uh, fortunately for me, he draws into a Greffer here to end the game. Uh, I think Greffer is the strongest monster. I think I don't think I can beat uh, Greffer with uh, oppression. So uh, yeah, unless I can draw into Cactus Bouncer. Cactus Bouncer is out to uh, to Gruffer here. I draw into Shiny Angel. I have Herald Orange Light, and I think I set Angel here. Uh, but unfortunately for me, he has a Dark Monster. He can just discard to make value. Uh, this is where I should have had a. Uh, if I had Cyber Valley in my deck, uh, I could just end the battle phase here. But I only have 600 life points, which is really unfortunate. Tax over the Shiny Angel, and I just scoop because I don't have Cyber Valley in my deck. Okay, maybe uh, game two. Um, so that's a pretty much a bad loss for me, just because of my deck building issue. I decided to decree because Vyu Turbo just loves back row, and also oppression. Uh, I set the Nova Summoner and I set the Book of Moon, I believe. Yeah, uh, I want him to force him to waste the MST if he does have it. Uh, if he does, yeah, if he does have it. If he doesn't have it, then I'm pretty safe to set the decree next turn. Uh, he summons a Sirocco here and he goes straight to the battle phase and then he attacks over. Uh, unfortunately for him, he draws a lot of monsters, so which is really bad for him because now he has to do something about it. Uh, here he special summons a Gale and he has my Nova Summoner, but the strange thing he does is he synchro summons into Stardust, which I don't agree with because my Nova Summoner can get into a DD War Lady and deal with it. And seeing as he doesn't have any back row, like this making Stardust here was actually incorrect. Um, yeah, so now I had the option of making my Christia play live with a decree. And this protects my Christia from trap cards. So I do all this play here. Um, yeah. So I attack the Nova Summoner and I make another Shining Angel. Um, and then I attack again and I lose a thousand. I lose 1100. So I try to go into the Shining Angel line to get the Honest. Uh, and then here I have to waste my Shining Angel. I think I wasted a lot of life points unnecessary because I could have made a, a Synchro play as opposed to making a. Uh, uh, as opposed to doing this play because I waste my DD Warrior Lady. But that's fine. Uh, misplays happen. So I banished this Stardust here and I attacked him directly for 11. I'm worried about Gores because Gores can't deal with Christia anyways with Honest. So I return this back to my hand, special summon the Christia. Yeah, I definitely should have made Bryo instead of doing this play because uh, this wastes more life points. So I think I set my Dust Tornado here instead of Decree. In case he draws into trap cards. Uh, here he can set this Reiko here to out the Christia. Uh, I do have the Kai's here, but I don't have a way to sacrifice my Christia safely. So I just summon an Angel, I believe, and then attack him. I attack with Christia first because I want his Reiko to pop the Christia and not my Shane Angel, which is good. And then this way I can just attack him directly 14. It's good. And then I just pass. <clears throat> so even if he heavy storms me here, um, I'm still at 5 to his 4. Which is always a really good trade here. Uh, so it's always a good idea to just set more back rows if you could. So he thinks about what to do. He sets the hamster here. I draw into Christia because I know it. And this way I can sacrifice Caius here, uh, put the four fairies in my graveyard, and then special summon the Christia. Uh, I think he auto scoops here even though he has enough life points to sustain the damage. Yeah, he scoops. Okay, so pretty good game so far. Um, to be fair, he, he is playing, he, he's drawing a lot of monsters, so. Uh, I think he's just drawing really bad against uh, me in general. Um, so he opens a pretty, a pretty bare, fair back row. Uh, I noticed that he didn't see my decree, so if I do draw into decree, his back row is pretty useless. He draws into four back row. Wow. So he sets a uh, the Raikou here with the bottomless and a compulsory. 
the compulsory plays around the mind control. So if I mind control the Raiko here, um, then basically I could, uh, yeah, then he could just compulse his Raiko back. I summon the, uh, the Lone Fire here, and I have the MST in my hand, so uh, automatically I know that he, does, he doesn't have oppression here because he would flip the oppression. So right now I'm at the 50/50. I can MST and hopefully and I hit the uh, hopefully I hit the bottomless because he's fully anticipating that um, he bottomlesses the titanial. So I do the MST here to hit the uh, bottomless and I'd actually hit the 50/50, which is really good for me. So here I have the option of attacking to the right go, but I want to preserve my titanial for a different play. So what I do is I mind control here, and he has the option of uh, compulsing my titanial back to my hand or compulsing his right go back. Uh, I flip the right go to target his back row, and he tar he changed to compulsory. Um, I have the option here to letting it resolve or negating the compulsory. Um, since I saw Spirit Reaper in game one. I make the read that he might Spirit Reaper me the next turn. So what I do is I let it resolve and go back to my hand. <clears throat> okay, so I mill three here, and luckily for me, I actually mill a lot of fairies, which is very unlikely. I mill three fairies here, so all I need is one more fairy. So if I can get this Herald of Orange Light in the graveyard, my Christie is live. So I can't attack him anymore. I can't. I could summon the Orange Light, but I already normal summoned already, so I can't synchro summon to Armory Arm. So I just give it back to him. Uh, he could sacrifice here for Soroka if he wants to, and he does, and he attacks me for 2,000. Uh, him attacking me directly for 2,000 tells me that um, he has a way to out my Gores. So uh, looking at his hand here, he does. He has Icarus attack to deal with the Gores. So um, I don't think it's Icarus attack because he is playing on Vayu Turbo. So then Vayu Turbo does not play Icarus attack. So I'm like thinking, why would he attack me directly? Uh, if it's a Gores, that's a potential Gores or not, because if it is a Gores that gets dropped down here, then I, he has to out the Gores and the token. And his D prison, so I'm thinking he might have Mirror Force set. That was my, my thought process. Okay, so I draw into a Shiny Angel, which is really good, because if I can set the Shiny Angel, then I can get the fourth fairy in the graveyard. So, But I lose the chance to activate Herald of Orange Light. So I think what I do here is I normal summon the Shiny Angel. Hopefully, uh, since I kind of read that it might be a Mirror Force because of the way he attacked, uh, I summon the Shiny Angel and hopefully he Mirror Forces here. Uh, but it actually ended up being a deep prison. So I attack uh, into the Sirocco here and then I take the 600. Oh, he actually deep prisons. But hopefully, I was hoping to get this in the graveyard and get DD Warrior Lady attack into the Sirocco and then banish it. So this way he has less, uh, he can't get his value off because he doesn't have, uh, yeah, he has less sponsors. He has less Sirocco's in his graveyard. So I get D-Prison here, so um, if he attacks me directly here, uh, then now, well, he still has the Icarus attack. So I'm thinking that this set right here, my read was it was Mirror Force, but it wasn't actually Mirror Force. It was Icarus attack because I'm using the uh, staple or the standard list for, for Vayu to pretty much logic my way into thinking it's a Mirror Force, but it wasn't a Mirror Force. Uh, so he sends the Vayu off of Arm with Armageddon Knight, and he attacks me for 2,000. So I'm still thinking it's a Mirror Force. So I draw into Dandelion here. I have the option of setting the Dandelion here, uh, which I do do because if it is a uh, if it is a Mirror Force, then Dandelion is safe to set here. So I pretty much stall out. Um, he draws into another Deep Prison. He sacrifices his uh, for Sirocco. Uh Yeah, maybe I I think maybe what he should have done was sacrifice his Sirocco for Sirocco because he does have a value in Graveyard. But I do have the DD Crow for the value anyways, so it doesn't matter. So he flips over here, and then uh, I get the Dandelion tokens. So this way, if I do draw into a Kais, I can sacrifice it and uh, target the, the Sirocco and then banish it. Okay, I draw into a Sangan here. I'm still kind of under this weird uh, Sirocco line, so I set the Herald of Orange Light here uh, to pretty much get him to uh, waste more resources here. So end phase here, he activates Icarus Attack. So um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was a Mirror Force, but it was an Icarus Attack. So Icarus Attack end phases, and he targets my two monster, which I don't agree with. Uh, maybe he thought this was a Recruiter, so that's why he attacked. He didn't he didn't want to deal with it. And he did have Lethal after all, because he's been attacking me for turn after turn without me goresing. So I think he was under the impression that uh, I had no gores to stop his, uh, his arm wing play. So I can see why he did that. So Icarus attacks, and then now he draws it to a Spirit Reaper. Um, he banishes for value, but I respond with Crow. And this way he can't make his uh, OTK. And if he has any other monster here, I lose. Uh, that's assuming it's bigger than 600. But it was a Spirit Reaper, so 
<laughs> I lucked out on this one. So he attacks me directly for 300. And I remember how I told you guys before that um, I let the compulsory resolve because I did see his uh, his Spirit Reaper in game one. So I let him... Uh, that's why I calculated this play where I let him resolve the, comp the compulsory. So he has a chance to hit my Titanial. And guess what? <laughs> he hits the Titanial, which is really good. So I'm at 300 life points. I'm like, oh my god, what do I do? But, good thing for me, there's four fairies in my graveyard. And since I couldn't special summon Christia last turn, because he'd end phase Icarus attack, now I have the option to special summon Christia. However, he still has a back row. And I luckily draw into a Cyber Dragon, and I special summon the Cyber Dragon, go into battle phase, and then hopefully I can attack over the Sirocco here. He depresents here, and then now I'm like, okay, cool. Special summon Christia, and then I get a, another monster. Uh, so I get a Herald of Orange Light here. I think I should have gotten a Recruiter. Yeah, I definitely should have gotten a Recruiter because um, DD Warrior Lady can deal with the, the Spirit Reaper here. Uh, so yeah, that was a misplay on my part. Um, I, I go into... I think I set the Sand Gain here. Oh, oh, I see. So the reason why I didn't get the DD Warrior Lady is because I set the Sand Gain. So this, if they kill the Sand Gain, I can get the DD Warrior Lady. So there was no, uh, there was no problem for me there. He draws into a value here, he shifts his monster to defense position, and then he attacks over my uh, Sangan. So Sangan gets the DD Warrior Lady here, and then it's pretty much a wrap. Uh, I can use the DD Warrior Lady to banish the, the Spirit Reaper. Uh, my my <laughs> Christia can deal with Sirocco. And even though he has 8,000 life points, this is really, really good for me. I'm at a really good spot. He draws into a Dead Oppression, uh, so he sets a value here. I summon a Tomato. No, I don't set. I don't summon the tomato here. The reason why I don't summon the tomato here is because um, I'm only at 300 life points. All he needs, all he needs to do is summon a Greffer and attack over into my uh, tomato. So what I do is I set the tomato here um, and wait until he's at low enough life points to where it matters. So I set the tomato here. He draws it to a Caius, which is good. I unfortunately cannot flip the the tomato just yet, so I go straight into battle phase and attack for 28. Uh, I think I set the Plague Spitter Zombie. No, I don't. Um, yeah, that was a misplay. Um, not sending the Plague Spreader Zombies in misplay for two reasons. Uh, if he has mind control and brain control, he could steal my set monster and brain control my uh, my Christia, and then he can attack me directly. So, yeah, sending not sending the the, 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 the zombie here was a misplay. But I did play around the brain control, which is why I sent another monster. Looks like he summons the Armageddon Knight here to summon, to set to send the, the Plague Spare Zombie. Uh, yeah, and I'm, he's pretty locked out. Um, all his Sirocos are gone. No, he has one more Sirocco, so I, he should definitely send the Sirocco. Or a Vayu, at least. Uh, yeah, he has one more Vayu in his deck. So it goes to battle phase, he attacks over the Tomato here. Um, him attacking with his Armageddon Knight tells me that it might be a Brain Control. So I definitely set Plague Spare Zombie next turn, or another monster. Yeah, I drew into another tomato, so I set it to play around the brain. I attack directly, or I attack over the Armageddon Knight, he takes 1400, and I set the tomato again. So still playing around the brain control, because he has enough life points. Uh, so he has a Caius, and he has a reinforcement to the army, and he just scoops, yeah. So yeah, this hand here, maybe he maybe should have, so, I don't know, maybe he should have uh, searched for the Greffer here to set it, or summon the Greffer, attack over, and then stall for another turn. Uh, and again, if I do attack him for 2,800 over the Greffer, it would have put him at what? It would have put him at uh, 1,100 less. He would have been at 1,900 light points. So he still has enough for brain control. So I think he should have just fought this out. But he scoops anyways, and that's uh, yeah, that's my matchup against Vayu Turbo. Uh, there was a lot of good draws for me in game three. Uh, I made some good decisions with the the Titanial, the Vayu. Uh, the Deed Crow can deal with the Vayu play, so that's why I side it. So yeah, yeah, that's pretty much the play. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that vi game vi gameplay video. I'm just gonna have one more video, and that video is gonna pretty much showcase uh, one more matchup for uh, Plant Fairy Zombies. Uh, it's gonna be another meta matchup. So yeah, stay tuned for that one. Peace.